The list of verses used to get people to give in order to please God is long indeed. Give to get on God's good side, give to stay on his good side, and give in order to get. Perhaps it's true that wrong teaching on this subject actually gets people to give by appealing to their greed. What about giving because you owe it to the church? One friend of ours received a letter from the leadership in her church shaming her for not giving to the church even though she attended and received all of the services. The letter went on to say that they had been keeping track for over a year and they were sure she had received more in services than she had paid for. After all, it said, they were a full service church. They then reminded her that there are hundreds of scripture verses that talk about tithes and offerings. The letter even said that Jesus mentioned giving more than he mentioned the need for repentance. They closed by saying that there are a lot of ministries competing for your contribution dollar. If there is any way we can assist you in channeling some of it to your church, we will be more than happy to do so. Another couple recently began attending a new church where, as is customary in many churches, they were asked to fill out a first timers card and put it in the offering plate. In addition to including their name and address, they also checked the box that indicated they wished a pastoral visit. Not long after, the pastor paid them a visit. After about 15 minutes of small talk, he asked them if he could see their W-2 forms. Stunned, they asked why, to which he replied, so we can see what would be the appropriate amount of money you should give based on 10% of your income. Feeling very intruded upon, yet keeping her cool, the woman answered, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. You can guess what his answer was. What about tithing? The concept only appears infrequently in the New Testament and then in a very negative light. Tithing originated in the Old Testament. Actually, there were three separate tithes that totaled about 27.1%. 10% for the Levites, 10% of the rest to support the national festivals, and 10% of the rest for the poor. This was non-optional giving. In that day, the Israelites had a form of government called a theocracy, which means they were under the rule of God in the religious system. These tithes simply amounted to tax monies needed to run the country. The 27.1% it costs to live in that church state is similar to the non-optional amount of money we pay to live in our democracy, taxes. How should we view giving? Giving is, and has always been, a heart issue. Exodus chapter 25 in the Old Testament contains the account of raising the financial resources to construct the, to construct the sanctuary. God said to Moses in the scripture, tell the sons of Israel to raise a contribution for me. From every man whose heart moves him, you shall raise my contribution. Verse 2. After almost 10 chapters of specifications concerning the sanctuary, Moses repeats the condition of the giving. In Exodus chapter 35, he says, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded, saying, Take from among you a contribution to the Lord, whoever is of a willing heart. Verses 4 and 5. In 2 Corinthians 9, Paul states, Let each one do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 7. In the next verse, Paul reveals the source from which a heart to give comes. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. 
Do you think that believing that verse would have an impact on giving? Finally, for those who give in order to get, in Romans chapter 11, it says, or who has first given to God that it might be paid back to him again? The answer is no one. No one has really given to God because all things come from him. We do reap what we sow in a spiritual sense and a material sense. There are rewards for good works. These are true statements. But if we sow or work to earn a reward or to put God in the position of owing us, we get nothing. This is where I disagree. God owes no one anything. And Matthew 6 verse 1 to 4 says that if you give in order to be noticed or to gain someone's approval, you have your reward already. In other words, you have been receded in full and your only reward is that someone noticed. <laughs>